here I have Dianthus. According to Wikipedia, its common names are Carnation, D Dianthus caryphyllus, Sweet William, Dianthus barbatus, and Pink. Dianthus is a genus of 340 species of flowering plants in the Caryphyllaceae family, mainly native to Europe, Asia, and a few are from Africa. In the language of flowers, Dian Dianthus signifies boldness. Dianthus are herbaceous perennials, a few are annual or biennial, with some subshrubs with woody stems. The leaves are often a gray-green or blue-green color, opposite, <clears throat> opposite leaves and simple leaves. The flowers have five petals with frilled or pinked margin and mostly pale to dark pink. Dianthus napii species is yellow with purple center. Dianthus have strong spicy scents. Dianthus is from the Greek word dios or Zeus and anthos, flower. It's been called pinks for its frilled pink edges where the term picking shears come from to decorate with frills. Dianthus are used as food plants for larvae of Lepidoptera species including cabbage moth, double striped pug, large yellow underwing, and lychnis. Dianthus has been bred and hybridized for over 300 years to produce thousands of cultivars for garden use and floristry, to produce white, pink, yellow, and red, with many shapes and shades. The cultivars fall in six groups. One, border carnations. Two, perpetual flowering carnations. Three, malmaison carnations. 4 old fashioned pinks, 5 modern pinks, 6 alpine pinks. The dianthus may grow 4 to 18 inches wide. These bloom bring um, these bloom spring to early summer. Some rebloom intermittently or continuously through summer and fall. Dianthus benefit from regular deadheading. Plant perennial types during color, cooler months in spring or fall to encourage deep roots and compact shape. These grow under 6 inches tall. Some larger varieties grow 1 to 3 feet tall. Dianthus grow best in zones 4 through 8. Butterpli butterflies love the nectar rich blooms and these grow in mixed containers or in clumps of flower borders or rock gardens. It is also deer resistant. So as you can see, it does have the little frilly edges and this one's a lighter pink that becomes white as it starts to die off. And that's a pink one and I threw these seeds in last year and it had a little tiny growth. And, and I guess over the winter this year, it began to root out underneath and it started with this little sprig here and now it's kind of spreading horizontally and it's got a big bush now that's covering this area where last year had some flowers, zinnias, and bachelor's button. The funny thing is bachelor button is supposed to um, spread and divide and multiply but it's not really doing that here I don't see any signs of it unless it shows up later however the zinnias are doing great um, they're coming back up and, and zinnias are not perennials I happened to pluck off some of the dead heads of the zinnias and I kept them <clears throat> and I threw the seeds into the ground into this area and it's starting to pop up but I need to fill in the rest of the spaces with some beautiful flowers. So Dianthus can benefit very much from deadheading as it will encourage more and more buds. It has
tons and tons of little buds and it's just gonna keep making many many flowers so what happens is after it flowers it still has this really thick section here much like how marigolds have that section and it just kind of dries off and it just has like something like this a remaining little nub um, where the petals like shriveled and um, you gotta wait till it turns all brown I made the mistake of not letting the this part turn brown My, these went brown but I have no idea um, if they just dried out because it doesn't look like it ever flowered so anyhow uh, you wait till it's brown like this and then you cut it off and you save a bunch of the seeds and it's really easy all you've got to do uh, it's really hard to do with one hand let's see you just pluck off one of these deadheads and then in here are in this little area is a lot of seeds so let me try to get it out so right here <clears throat> are the seeds right in here so if you pull out these petals the seeds are like right in there <clears throat> and I think they're kind of like elongated seeds like marigolds are um, so the thing is I grew one I bought one of these from the big box store and it looked like that I bought it a couple of years ago and I um, planted it in the ground and it just kept blooming and blooming and making flowers and they looked so cute and I loved it and um, to my surprise it came back the following year yeah because it is perennial and like I said some are biennial and whatnot but they come back and they just keep producing more and more flowers which is a great gift so so here if you look at it it looks a lot like carnations and I thought what um, it looks like carnations because it's related to carnations it's in the same family and um, another thing is the sweet Williams I bought a packet of sweet William seeds and um, a packet of diantha seeds which is where I got this cut this shade from and I bought a packet of uh, so Sweet William, Dianthus, and <clears throat> um, Carnations. Now, my Carnations didn't come up because things have been digging through my garden. Um, as you can see, there's some holes in here. It's really frustrating. The Sweet William packet, uh, I wasn't in love with the flower shades, so I ended up giving the packet to a small child as a gift um, a friend of my daughter's and so <clears throat> it's kind of good to have like um, variation genetic variation or, or to give seeds as a gift so it, to me it was worth it um, and so I wonder why I guess they just named these dianthus because they're smaller blooms and Carnations are tend to be a little bit bigger unless they're small sprays. Um, I guess it's just named after the subspecies. Have a great day.